Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I recently had the pleasure to design and model Baby Nut for Planters Rebirth ad. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that I used to create him. So let's get started. So here's the completed model, and I wanna show you the process of first starting. So let's hide the hat. And this is a pretty simple uh, body shape, and it actually consists of a bunch of spheres. So when I first lay it out, I make a couple circles. If you create an EP curve, you, under the curve is this tool right here. You can hold C, left click and drag, and you can create a, a point there. While holding C, click and drag on the next one there like this. And then you can right click, go to control vertex, select the vertices here and move them over. Once I'm happy with it more or less, uh, I can start working on the rest of the like actually making it dimensional. So the way I do this is I like to make a sphere. And when you make the sphere, you wanna give the axis 32 divisions. And then for the subdivision height, I just kinda, I look at it and I want the vertices in the middle here to be more or less square, like that. That's good. And then I'm gonna select just the bottom faces here. I want a little bit of this curve coming down, but that's it, and delete that. So now I have this semi-sphere, but you can see there's a pole on top. So when I press three, it's gonna be a little pointy here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. To do this, you can get rid of half and then get rid of another half. So you're left with a quarter. And then I'm gonna use the multi-cut tool and I just go from the middle and I go out. Uh, I wanna go this way. And the way I kind of know that this is gonna work is that the line is more or less horizontal straight because if I go this way you can see it's tilted towards the top and this way is, is towards the bottom this is straight so then I go from the middle here you find the center go this way and then you want to go out one and then down to the next one like this and you know this works when you end up with a quad right here in the middle you can then go back in here select these not the center and hit control delete you can then select these guys here and just hit regular delete not control delete that's going to keep the uh, the vertex there in the corner otherwise you will get rid of this vertex and that's not good okay so now we have this quadded quarter of a sphere so we just want to duplicate it and rotate it 90 degrees shift d like that a couple times reselect them combine merge vertices and soften edge okay now we have the a clean uh, quadded sphere i can then line this up like this how i like it i can then duplicate it rotate it 180 degrees move it down then scale Okay, I can see here that I don't need this face here. I do need this one. I'm gonna select both, combine, double click this edge, sh shift double click this edge, and then click bridge. And then we can add some divisions and you wanna be evenly spaced. So the way we have it here, this face here, should be the same size. And by the way, if you leave the tool and you can see that it's gone, like that little window, if you press T, it'll bring that window back. Then here we can see if we can do a blend. And I, sometimes it makes a curve, sometimes it doesn't. It didn't do it in this case, so that's fine. And now what we can do is just select individual vertex loops and just uh, scale. You can also do it with edges, double click the edge press R, scale, like that. Okay, and then what you can also do, is you see how right now it's kinda, it goes, it feels like there's a, a pinch here. So I just go in and click edit edge flow, like that. Here like this, and then here. Like that. Okay, so edge flow is done. We can soften edge. 
take a look at our shape. Now the other thing that uh, the clients wanted is they wanted to give the baby nut uh, little cheeks. And I'll show you what those look like. So you can see, it's hard to see it, but it's got little tiny cheeks right there. And the process was very simple. You just, uh, see the same spot? No, so we'll select the, the edges here, like this. So isolate it, go back to our edge selection, press B for soft select, and then hold B and middle drag, and that's going to give you a soft select like this. Then you can just gently pull that out, maybe a little more. doesn't have to be a lot because once you smooth it it's going to be fine and there you can see it's, it's very slight but it gives a little bit of a um, little bit of a bump the legs and arms are just simple tubes like that and same thing I use curves to outline them and you can just make a use the EP curve tool and just go like that And then to actually make the arms, now that we have, and the legs, now that we have the curves, uh, I make a cylinder like this. And we want it to be dense, but not too dense. So I'll just use a 16 subdivision axis. I'm going to select those faces on top and bottom. Just right click face, uh, select, control, deselect the middle, delete them. Because we just need tubes. Hold control, we can scale this down like that. And then line this up like this. And the curves are just as a guide. I'm actually not going to use them to make the model. And then uh, clear history. I always like to clear history. I'm going to double click the insert edge loop tool. And then I'm going to click multi. Click in here once. And then go into the inputs and give it some divisions. So let's say 20. That's pretty good clear history now if because I didn't freeze the transformations if I press the lattice tool which is also under the form uh, create lattice and the options that I use for the lattice are this so this is the wrong options so I, I like to set divisions to the minimum which is 222 two, two, and then local divisions to 30 that's gonna give me the softest fall off and hit apply once you do it once you'll remember and I did not have the object selected, click it again, now it's selected, and then we can add a couple lattice uh, divisions here in division T, like that. Now, so this is important. When you're moving these around, you really don't want to move them like that. You only want to move them together. And the reason you want to do this is because this will happen. If I, let's say I want to change the width here. Now from the side view or the front view, I can go in and line this, line this up to the curve. But if we look this way, you can see we just made this really squished shape. So we don't want to do that. We want to select the, all the vertices, and instead of moving them, we want to scale them together. And what I can do is I can scale them like this. I can move them when they're together, and then scale them to the size I want. I can do the same here. Take this one. I can rotate them and scale it together like that line it up select both of these rotate I'm gonna rotate these as well clear history and then we're done. And then we can uh, freeze transformations, reset transformations, duplicate, and then scale negative one in X. And there we go. Okay, so now for the hands, for his gloves, uh, they look a little complicated. Oops, why can't I see? Oh, it's isolated. 
but they're actually not that complicated because if you uh, follow my channel I made a hand modeling tutorial a while ago and this is the hand from that tutorial right here and all I did was I took this hand I removed the geometry for the nails so if you're making gloves just don't make the nails like that very simple see no more nails then I subdivided it once just give it a good subdivision like this you can then to make it a little pudgy uh, I it's kind of weird but I just scaled it this way like that and then use the transform component which is this button here it's also under mesh it's called the uh, edit mesh maybe transform there and if you select the blue arrow you can kind of do this it's gonna kind of push it out make them a little pudgy like that so like a little baby hand and then for the gloves detail which is all of this stuff um, I use the bevel tool so if you go like this and then you do the same on this side and the way I model these hands um, in my tutorial and this makes it very easy you can then select these loops like this so you first need to create all the edges that you want to uh, create that uh, seam on right so I'm only going to show you on the small part so you do this then shift right click click bevel and then we want to add three uh, an extra segment in here because we can then take this fraction make it larger like that and then if you double click the interior edge loop like that make sure you select that and then use the transform tool again click it take the blue arrow and push it in that gives you the appearance that there's a seam like it's seamed together and you do it to any of the seams that you want to make uh, so I made a seam coming along here along the around the thumb along the side here and then for the glove part also very simple you take this and we just need to make the little hole there you extrude that move that out kind of like shape it a little bit we can use soft select just to kind of push this around and then we can add a loop in here scale this down select this extrude extrude and just shoot it down scale it and then that's it you don't need to do anything else because you never see inside we can reinforce the edges a little bit so drop an edge loop here one here so when it rounds it looks like that so very simple uh, you can follow the tutorial on my other video you can make these gloves same here you just make some loops and then extrude that and then you get these uh, lines here but you can see it's really not much to it so the shoes were fun to do because you have the main part of the shoe and then you have the spats which are really cute for a baby so I had to make them into take his original design and kind of make a baby version and it because we're seeing it you know uh, not super close it didn't need a lot of detail and you can see it's very simple now whenever I make uh, any kind of shapes like this I always look at reference so I just looked at some reference of soles and baby shoes and to make the shape it's actually very similar to the way you would make a foot and I have a tutorial on how to make a foot it's very simple you make a cube right and you click extrude 
Now, if I grab the blue arrow and pull this out, you can see what happens, which is not what we want. So you just press those cube faces together. It's gonna separate them out like that. So this is your basic shape for a shoe. Now, if we delete, because it's a shoe on a foot, you would leave the bottom. On a shoe, you don't need it. So it starts to look like that. Then you go from the top view, start shaping it there. I want to extrude it first because I want to get a little bevel in there like that. And then we're just going to extrude. I'm going to scale it instead like this. And then I'm going to deselect the center like that. So I just have those edges there and then scale those in like that. Then I can click fill hole use the multi-cut tool, and we're just gonna cut across like that. Because of the way we made the shoe, just a cube, everything's gonna connect. And then we can just go from here to here like that. Okay. I'm gonna select this edge like this, control to faces, face, and then shift greater than to scale the selection. You can then extrude. Push that out like this, deselect here, extrude again, push out. You can scale this just flat like that, make the heel. Right, and then use insert edge loop tool, add a loop like that, scale it in this way, bring this down. And you can see we just need to take the bottom here Oops, I just select the front and just scale those in like that. And then add loops to make it uh, sharp like that. Now there's a trick to this. You can see like if I add a loop to make this corner and then this one, it goes all the way over. I don't want that, but I'm gonna do it temporarily because all I need to do here is go from here to here to there, like that. And then I can go from here to here, and then from here to there. I can then double click this edge and this one. We need to make sure we do the same on the other side one, one more time. We can select these extra loops that we made. Control delete. Control delete. Now you can see we have this extra edge here. These extra edges that's gonna, that will help us make a nice sharp edge here. We can add a loop here. And bring this in you know and then you can shape the the shoe any way you want and then to add that loop there so I wanted a little more detail so you subdivide once add detail where you need it and then to add that cut over there kind of planned out where I want it so I used one of these uh, loops here see one there so I, I can start from here and then you can either use the loop that's there or if you don't want to you can make a new one but if you use the one that's there it's very simple basically what you want to do is you want to go from here to the same side same place on the other side like that and then you can do a bevel, add segments like that. Now to make it quads, just delete that edge there. And we can merge vertices just to make sure threshold's too high. So point zero zero one. There we go. There. That's good. Now 
we're going to select this loop, deselect that, and deselect that. And I'm going to use transform component and just tuck it under using the blue arrow like that. And if you want, you can just move it over like that. It's going to give you that edge. Usually that's enough. You need to do more. You can do more. And this path is simple. Literally, it's just a cylinder. Add a lattice. And first, I'm going to just shape it like that. Clear history. Add another lattice. And then in this one, I'm going to add a couple divisions. One this way. A couple this way. Turn wireframe so we can see what's going on. And then we can start shaping it. Okay, so when you're happy with the shape, we need to make that uh, cut, right? Like the that thing there. So that was pretty simple as well. Uh, using the multi-cut tool, I kind of blocked out where I want the cut to be. But before I did that, I needed to make a duplicate, right? So I'm going to duplicate. Because when I do this, I need to do it twice. One on the front and then one on the back. Uh, I'll explain in a sec. So first, I'm going to select one of them and just make that cut like this. And then I'm going to use like one of these loops here as my division and then this one and click detach. Delete half. Then select this one, the, the whole one and click detach on the same place and then if we show wireframe I can see where I made this cut so now on this one I'm gonna use multi cut tool I want to cut here because I want to overlap like that select this loop detach so double click those faces and hit delete so now what I have I have this one and that one and what I can do is select this edge Press B for soft select, make it large, kind of push that in, select this one, and then pull that out like that. And now we have the overlapping things like that. And we can work on just one at a time. And I don't need this edge here, unnecessary. And then the way I like to round things off, I like to put a, an edge like this just across then I can just do that and then I can just connect this here and it doesn't have to be perfect because you can double click it shift at an edge flow same with this one and now it's all good now I still have these triangles here and that's on purpose because I want to use multi, uh, I want to use the insert edge loop tool, turn off autocomplete relative distance is what I want, double click here, double click here and then shift and then double click here, shift click here, shift click here, double click there and there and now we have a loop. Now you can delete this. Like that, extrude inside, and then reverse normals. Uh, this button, or it's under mesh display, reverse, soften edge, also under mesh display, clear history, turn the wireframe off, turn that, and there's our spat. And put some uh, spheres for buttons. Okay, very simple. Now the hat is also a very simple shape. We can make a cylinder. Divisions, let's do 32, so it has a lot of divisions. Height, like that. Select the bottom here and delete those faces. Double click this edge and then extrude. Right, there's the hat. 
this is a problem, right? See, we have a a pole here. There's a super easy way to get rid of this pole. I'm gonna just extrude this once, like that, and then one more time, and then delete to leave a hole. Now, if you if I double click this, you can see I have 32 edges, and I know this because I made an edge, I made the cylinder with 32 edges. Now, if you take a a plane, just a regular plane, and we bring it up in here like that. If you take 32, divide by 4, you get 8, right? And if I double click the outside edge, it also says 32. That means if I select both of them, combine, clear history, double click here, double click there, and click bridge, they will connect. Then I can take the bridge offset until this lines up. Then you can select the inside faces that are the plane and then use average, which is under where is average vertices. And just press G a bunch of times so you can increase the iterations. And then just keep hitting it like that. Scale the, uh, grow the selection and then just one more time there and now you can see we have a nice quad at top now before we add more detail what we need to do is shape it and the easiest way to do it is with a lattice so I'm going to select these vertices here add a lattice add a couple divisions just this way like that and then we will scale Scale this in, that out, kind of tip it a little bit, like that. Now the head is not straight, you can see there's a curve to it as well. So to do that, I want to add a lattice to the whole thing and add a couple vertical points like this. So U divisions, bring this up, down, like that. And now there's also a curve in from the front. So now I'm going to clear history, add a lattice again. And this time we need T divisions, now S divisions, like this, two more. Bring these up, bring these down. Maybe just the back a little less, like that. That's it. Now, we want to bevel the edge here. But before we do that, let's give it thickness. So, extrude. I don't think that worked. Extrude. There we go. And now, so there is a thickness here that you can use. But sometimes I find the thickness breaks. If it doesn't break for you, like points don't fly away, then use the use that. We're just gonna go inside like this. And you can see the normals are flipped. That's a simple fix, just flip them back. And then if you add a loop, turn autocomplete on, one here, one there. I add two here and two here actually, like this. one there inside doesn't matter and then we'll add just a bevel here bevel segments let's do four actually we don't need that many we just turn chamfer on like this and then we need three segments like that soften edge press three for preview there it is now for the this band around the hat, we can duplicate the hat. Just select some of these faces, delete the rest. I'm gonna add a loop here just to contain it. And then extrude. Push it out like that. That's it. Soften edge. There's the band. Very simple. Now the fun part 
for me was creating the shapes for the face and I drew them out in curves first. So first let's do the mouth. So when I do the shape for the mouth, I wanted it to be uh, simple, but also have good topology so that it, it can project shrink wrap on the on the body well. So I duplicate, scale this down, bring this down like that. Okay. I can then select both of these poly modeling. And then, uh, oops, sorry, surfaces, no, right here, curves and surfaces. Double click on the uh, loft, quads, general, isoparms, isoparms, bottom one, click apply. We can then add divisions in the U like that. That's good. Clear history. Get rid of the curves, we don't need them. There's a hole in here. That's simple to fix. Select edge here and then go to poly modeling and fill hole it's also under where is it mesh fill hole so now it's filled but we need to uh, connect this geometry So this one uh, was a little different because we need to make a couple of shapes here. I'm gonna duplicate this out, push this in like that. And then I'm going to go from here to here to here and do a loft. Surfaces, loft, like that. We need to add divisions. Like that, it's pretty dense, which is good. And then I'm gonna manually add divisions here. So I want a division I'll be on one here, one here, two here like this, then one in the middle. And then same thing, if I double click this edge, this is 40, that's okay. We need to add a plane, like that. So a plane with 40 edges would have 10 subdivisions. Yep. They need to be on the same plane, so you can see this one's reversed like that. Combine. Clear history. Double click, double click. Bridge. And I'm going to add a division to the bridge like that. And then average vertices. There. Now, I'm going to actually scale this a little bit like that and then do average vertices again and scale this up a little bit one more time like that. So that's nice and smooth. I'm going to add this little eyelash thing there. This isn't exactly what we need, well, because what we need to do is separate this, detach. That's going to be the outer part. I'm going to duplicate one more time. This one, I want to separate here and click detach. And this one's going to go slightly behind, like that. And then on this one, I need to separate here. And I need that. Now, 
what we need to do is do a couple of special things here. So this one, I'm gonna assign an existing material that I already have, it's just white. And then this one, we'll get black. And then this one, we'll get clear, which is where? There. So I need to make a round lens for this. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use a sphere. So I'm gonna take a sphere, I'm gonna snap it here. I'll rotate it this way. And because this is 40 divisions here, I need to make sure the sphere has a subdivision axis of 40. And the high subdivisions, we need it to be really high. Like 200, that's gonna be good. And then I'm gonna snap to this vertex here, right there, like that. Now from the side view, you can see this is the lens that we need to round out. So I'm gonna scale this. Basically I need to figure out like how far I need to, to go out. And then what you do is you scale until it meets the edge like that. Show the wireframe so we can see it. There we go. So actually, we're gonna give it more divisions. We're gonna do 80. Yeah, like that. Now, clear history, freeze it, and then this one, make sure we freeze that one too. So now I'm gonna select the lens, then shift select the sphere, and then go to the form and open the options for shrink wrap. And we, what we need to do is we need to set this parallel to axis, bi-directional. We wanna set this along the Z axis, which is this one here. And you can see it down here, it's the Z axis, like this, and then hit apply. Now, here's the problem. When you hit apply, it's not gonna be perfect because there's a pole in the center and we need this to be smooth. So the options aren't there to smooth uh, the shape until you actually uh, click the shrink wrap in the inputs. And then here, there's a target smooth level. Set it to one. And then we can clear history. And this will give us a round lens like this. And that's what we want it. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part here, I'm gonna snap it to this edge so that it, see it lines up like that. And then we can unhide the body. Let's make, oh, this is reversed. So same thing we did with the with this lens. We're gonna do to the nose, to the body, and then we're gonna click the form, shrink wrap, shrink wrap, and shrink wrap that. Right, just in the Z direction. But you can see how it's like flickering through, and it actually also looks very chunky if we just look at it. See how it's like there's these weird. Uh, pinches and the reason that happens is because we don't have a target smooth level i'm going to set the target smooth level to three it's going to be a little slow but it's going to give us a smoother result and then if i unhide the body you can see it's inside that is because the body is not smooth but you can still this is still inside so under the shrink wrap there's an offset so it's too high so I'm gonna set the offset to 0 0.01, still too high, 0 0.001, like that. Not enough, let's do three. Let's do four, like that. So I know the settings now, I'm gonna do the same here. So we need to do the same to 
uh, this part, but I also want to do it to the lens. So to bring the lens with the shrimp crab, we need to do is first is we need to wrap the lens to this part, the white part of the eye. So like the lens first, then that, and then the form wrap. So now if I move this part, you see the lens goes with it. Now if I select the white part of the eye, shift select this, and then go to the form and shrink wrap, it's gonna bring the lens with it. And then on the shrink wrap, So here's what I mean by how it's a little chunky. You see these lines here? So that is because we're following the geometry. But as soon as I set the subdivision to three, and then for the offset, we want to set it to 0 0.003. We want to set it a little less than this one, so it's behind it. You can see now it's smooth. Then we'll unhide the lens. off of that and what the lens is doing it's giving us that highlight we can clear history reset transformations duplicate and flip it to the other side but how do we get a pupil in there well we can make a circular pupil and add it the problem is that when the eye blinks or deforms right that pupil it's going to uh, deform with it, but we want it to stay uh, circular. So how do we do that? Well, we can use a texture to do that. I'm going to hide the lenses for a sec, and then I'm going to select um, this part here. I'm going to assign a new uh, material. I'm going to just make a Lambert like this. And we're just going to assign it there. So now we have this material assigned. Now I'm going to make a ramp. Like this I'm going to click the ramp, right click the lamp, not uh, left click and click create as projection. So this is going to give me this thing, which basically sets up a, a 3D projection node. And this is the projection node. And if I take the projection node and snap it to the center of the eye like that, and then if I press six, and connect it to the color, our color to color, you can see there's the, the ramp. Now, if I take the ramp, set the type set the type to a circular ramp and interpolation to none and then move this over it's easier if we do it like this okay if I move this uh, point here you can see I can then change the pupil size now what I need to do is I need to do it to the other eye as well and we can kind of combine the materials for that but we need two separate ones and also what's going to happen is if I if I scale it too much it's going to start repeating so to fix that we need to come in here and uh, select the place 2D texture node, turn off wrap U, wrap V. But the problem is we have gray outside. So we need to select the ramp, scroll down to color balance, <clears throat> and make the default color the same as the as that color, so which is white, the outside color. And now you can see we can scale this how we want it. So now let's do it for the, the same for the other eye. So we just need to uh, create a, another Lambert like this and then assign it to this eye. 
Then we need to make another ramp. Right click as projection like this. And then connect it to the color. And then take the ramp node here and bring it, snap it there like that. Now we also want the, them to be the same, right? Because right now they're not the same. So I can just select them both, set them to 0.4 like that, scale them together. But there's no ramp on that one. The ramp has not been set up. So instead of using the new ramp, we can just use the same one from the other eye because it's just the color input. So you just take the out color and drag it into this one. Now we have, so now what we're doing is we have two uh, placement nodes and one texture. I need to make sure I'm snapping it to the right place. Bring back the lenses. We can hide these. Bring back the hat. Then assign black there. And that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.